Constructed in 1840, the St. Philip's Anglican Church is set to be the first built for liberated Africans in all of the Americas. Hi, I'm Kathy Richards, and today I'm here at this historical site in Kingston, Tertola, BVI, with this edition of Promocation. And today we'll be talking with Dr. Catherine Smith. I am a historian. I am employed at the H. Lavery South Community College as lecturer, senior lecturer. At the moment, I'm the president of the nonprofit called the Association for the Preservation of Virgin Islands Heritage. We call ourselves APFI for short, and we're doing work with St. Philip's Anglican Church, and more specifically at the moment, the burial ground, the African burial ground that accompanies the church and is adjacent to it. We established, we were established in March 2014 as a nonprofit, and this is actually our initial project because we are very interested in all aspects of Virgin Islands heritage, including our historical sites. And uh, there was just a need to uh, certainly commemorate uh, the presence of our ancestors who were buried here in the cemetery. The site has been neglected for a long time, and there was a need to bring back a sense of sacredness to the site to make the public aware of the history, the unique and, and deep history that accompanies the liberated Africans who lived at this site. And also to also uh, sort of preserve the natural heritage on this site and all aspects of the history and heritage associated with uh, St. Philip's Anglican Church and the accompanying burial ground. We began initially as an ad hoc group and officially became a nonprofit in 2014. And this has turned out to be our first project. And we have sort of envisaged it in three stages, three phases. And phase one, of course, was the Stonewall enclosure, which specifically has been done to enclose the, the property. Uh, but we sort of decided that the history here and the heritage here is so unique and special that we didn't want to put up a chain fence or anything like that. Hence was the need to embark upon a, a project to uh, construct a, an enclosure and a stone wall that was authentic as possible in its materials and design. So with the stone wall, uh, you know, with that being said, it was necessary to locate similar materials that were actually used on the structure itself, such as similar field rock, you know, the bricks, the coral, with all of the necessary approvals and permissions, and then to have very skilled persons, as you can imagine, yes. construct the design of the wall to sort of make it as authentic as possible. But of course, this is a new addition, which one would not necessarily do, but it was important to enclose the structure, and having done so, do it in authentic a manner as possible. Phase two is about to begin, and will concerned the burial ground itself. So this has now uh, sort of become a heritage site in the way that tourists and cruise ship tourists want to come here. Therefore, the government has become involved, especially Public Works Department through the Ministry of, of uh, Communications and Works, who will now be carrying out the parking. Uh, but before they did that, we had to bring in technology which was able to identify exactly where the graves are. Our founder, Dr. Patricia Turnbull, of course has carried out research and has indicated and through our research can tell who and how many persons are buried here. And then in, in early 2000s, archeologists carried out a survey as well. But through this technology, we have been able to identify the dimensions of and the positions and placements of the graves. And having done that, we will now be able to provide proper parking that will not overwhelm the site, as well as a beautiful burial ground design that has been prepared by Public Works with us and with the church. Okay. It's a collaborative project with St. George's Anglican Church. Okay. Well, how this is gonna work is we know the names, okay. but when we don't know where those persons are. However, we can identify children's graves, and so far we've been able to identify two of them because of the size of them and the dimensions and we definitely have children in the burial records. Okay. We had a launching of the, the, um, the association and then we sort of had a groundbreaking, not to actually break ground, but symbolically to, to, to break yes. ground. And then the next thing that we hope to embark upon would be a fundraiser 
and it's going to be an auction that will be held on Monday, August uh, 23rd at Cedar School. Cedar School will be hosting this auction because they're right across the road and have been very interested in helping with this project along with local businesses and other businesses in the community and government, Cedar School as well. So that auction is going to be very exciting because we have the actual design for the burial ground and it's going to be autographed uh, by the Premier. But in addition to that, we are also going to have four, four unique and original paintings done by our artist Joe Hodge that tell you and narrate the history of these liberated um, Africans from the time that they came in on the waters, set foot on this soil and became free persons, and then initially were settled into the village. In phase two, we hope to have a memorial, which is gonna be placed right in front of or on the side of, adjacent to the structure, to the, to the church. And on that memorial, we will see the names of key persons in the history of uh, this settlement, because this was an entire village, the historic village of Kingstown beginning from the hill coming down, including where Cedar School now is. And so we hope to tell a little bit of the history to that memorial, although we're hoping to tell the deeper aspects of the history in a multimedia manner in what we hope to be the interpretation center, which is off to the side on, on the site. Okay. And also walkways, and there's the coal pit over at the back, benches, etc. We of course have the founder which is Dr. Patricia Turnbull and she's now the secretary. Uh, Darlene Maduro has been representing the church on there and she also has agreed to be the assistant secretary. Art Christopher is the treasurer and then we have Joe Hodge who is the artist and we have the elder Gil Trott. As well we have our newest addition who is the public relations officer Henry Creaky and the wonderful Mr. Ron Potter, who works specifically on the project itself with myself. If anyone is interested in becoming a part of this organization, they are free to do so? Yes, in fact, we hope to have a membership drive very soon. Um, early in the year, we want to call a, a, a general meeting for everyone interested. We have 15 people or so, and we would want to invite many more persons. And if you just hit up our Facebook page, or contact Henry Creaky or myself or Patricia Turnbull or Ron Potter and we definitely would be inviting many more persons in. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. What a wealth of information we've had there from Dr. Smith today. I've learned a great deal and I'm sure that you did too. If you have any topical issue you would like to promote, shoot us an email at videoandaudioproductions at gmail.com subject line promocation and don't forget to hit subscribe on our YouTube channel with this edition of promocation I'm Kathy Richards and you have been promocated